There are lots of different spellcasters in D&D, and for a first time player, playing one can be confusing. Today's guide will cover the different spell lists, spell slots, cantrips, spell levels, casting levels, and how half casters work. If you find any of this helpful, please do like and subscribe and tell me what else you'd like to see. So spells in D&D are organised by strength. The weakest are called cantrips, and these can be cast as many times as you want. The remaining spells are separated into levels, the weakest being level 1, and the strongest being level 9. Level 1 spells are things like simple commands or small amounts of healing, whereas level 9 spells involve shaping the laws of reality. It makes sense that you can only cast these a limited amount of times. The way that they limit these is through something called spell slots. Each one of these represents a time that you can cast that spell of a corresponding level. So if you had three second level spell slots, you could cast three second level spells. These all replenish when you take a long rest and recover all your abilities. But you are limited to a maximum number of spell slots, which is set out by your class and level. Obviously, the higher you level up, the more spell slots you get, and the higher level that those spell slots are. But how many do you get at each level? And what is the highest level spell that you can cast at each level? Well, that heavily depends on which spellcasting class you are. So there are nine spellcasting classes in D&D, and they include full casters, such as wizards and clerics, who get spellcasting as their main feature, and what we call half casters, such as warlocks and paladins, who get other abilities on top of their casting, and so they get fewer spells. The full lists are on screen now, and I'll quickly go over the differences between the two. The main difference between the full casters and the half casters is that they get a different number of spell slots at each level. We'll start by going over the full casters, those being wizards, sorcerers, clerics, bards and druids. As these guys progress, they can get spell slots all the way up to level 9. When they get a new level of spell, these classes don't get too much extra, as this is seen as a big upgrade. Other classes get additional benefits at these levels to keep things more balanced. Moving on to half casters, and they are quite different. Warlocks have their own thing, so we'll look at them last, but paladins, rangers and artificers are the other half casters, and they all work pretty much the same. Their maximum spell level is level 5, and they do get fewer spell slots overall at each of the levels. Note that, while artificers do get cantrips, the others do not, this is the one difference. The fact that these classes get fewer spell slots is balanced by their additional abilities as well, and so make sure if you're paying one of these classes, that you pay attention to one of these abilities. Finally, we'll move on to warlocks, the black sheep of the spellcasting world. They get spell slots like everybody else, but instead of splitting them into different levels, all of their spell slots are of the same level, which increases as they level up. This eventually reaches level 5 at level 9 which is a low level for a half caster to get these top level spells, but they have a, this balance with only getting a maximum of four spell slots overall. Now this may seem weak, but they are bolstered by invocations that can make their spells stronger, especially their warlock specific spells. Another way they are boosted is by their mystic arcanium, which gives them a sixth level, seventh level, eighth level and ninth level spell at certain levels that they can cast once per long rest. This balances them with other casters and really makes them a three quarters caster, all things considered. But how do Warlocks cast their first level spell if they only have fifth level spell slots? Well, before we get onto that, we'll need to understand how each class can choose their spells. So, without further ado, here we go. So how do I know what spells to choose and how many? Well, this is heavily linked to the class that you choose to play. Each class has their own spell list, although this can overlap with the others, and this sets out the spells that you can choose if you are that class. This will include spells all the way from cantrips up to level 9 spells, so the next trick is knowing how many spells of each level you should choose. Well, that is completely up to you, within reason. Alongside their spell slot list, each spellcasting class will have a number of cantrips that they can choose from their, their spell list, depending on their level, and a number of known spells, based on their level and sometimes their spellcasting ability. There will be a quick recap on spellcasting ability in a minute, so don't worry. Cantrip number does not feed into your known spells as they are seen as different, and it is up to you to how you split your known spells between your levels. The maximum level spell that you can choose is the maximum level spell slot that you have at your current character level. When choosing spells, it is useful to have a mixture of combat spells that deal damage and utility spells that can deal with situations rather than enemies. It's important to look through what's on offer and decide what type of cast you're going to be. Maybe you're a healer, or maybe someone who makes other people invisible and gives people advantage. So, now you've got a spell slot of the correct level, and you know the spell you want to cast, how do you cast it? Well, first and foremost, you need to know your spell attack modifier, and your spell save difficulty class, or DC. I covered these in detail in my first combat video, but I will do a quick recap now for you. So, your spell attack modifier, or bonus, is the number that you want to add to your d20 roll when you want to hit a target. 
It's calculated as the ability modifier for the ability that you use to cast your spells, plus your proficiency modifier, which again depends on your level. Each class has a specific ability that they use to cast spells, and these are on the screen now. You just take your modifier on that ability and add your level's proficiency bonus. Your spell save DC is the number another creature will have to roll to avoid your spells on a saving throw. This is 8 plus the spell attack modifier, or more specifically, 8 plus ability modifier plus proficiency bonus. So now we have these two numbers, we can look at how spells are put together. All spells have a level, which we've already covered, a casting time, a range, a set of components, a duration, and the description. We'll quickly go over all of these things here. Casting time is simply how long it takes to cast the spell. This can be an action on your turn, or a bonus action, or even a reaction. I'd recommend you check out last week's video if you're unsure what any of this means. This casting time can, however, extend for longer, for some more powerful spells or more impactful spells. Make sure you pay attention to, when, to this when you choose your spells, as you don't want to be caught out by the time it takes to cast. Range is pretty self-explanatory, telling you how far you can hit or affect a creature from. I went over encounters last week too, including maps, so I'd recommend that if you want to see how range is used, go check that out. When it comes to components, there are three obvious types. Semantic, which means a movement of the hands or body to cast the spell. Verbal, which means you have to say something and material, which means you need some kind of material to cast the spell, often set out in the spell's description. If the spell components are free, then you can also use a spell focus instead, which is something that most spellcasters get in their equipment. This doesn't work for expensive spell components though, and you'll have to actually fork out for those. Next we have duration, which tells you how long the spell lasts. Often this is instantaneous, as the spell just has an immediate effect, but some spells do take longer to resolve or have a lasting impact on other creatures. You may also see the word concentration here, which means you have to concentrate on this spell for the duration. This simply means that you can't cast another spell that requires your concentration while this one is active, and if you get hit and take damage, you need to make a constitution saving throw, trying to beat a 10 or half the damage, whichever is higher, in order to retain your concentration. Finally, we get to the actual description. This will tell you what the spell does and how it affects other creatures. Make sure to fully understand your spells in order to clarify with the DM how they understand the spells too. Sometimes there are ambiguous things in there that your DM will need to rule on, but in most situations these descriptions are pretty thorough. These descriptions also sometimes include what will happen if you cast the spell at a higher level. Normally this means it'll be more powerful, or hit more creatures or something like that. This is how warlocks can use lower level spells, even though all of their spell slots are of the same level. The final thing I want to touch on here is damage types. There are many in D&D, and I'll make a full video on which ones are the best and worst at some point, but for now, I'll simply tell you to be aware of the damage type that your spells do, as you'll likely come up against some creatures who are resistant, immune, or vulnerable to certain types of damage. This simply means that they take more or less damage to that type. Resistance means that they'll only take half damage when hit by that damage type. Immune means no damage at all, and vulnerable means that they will take double damage from that particular. It's good to notice if your enemies seem to be taking more or less damage than expected from certain attacks, so you can adjust what you are doing to them and which spells you've decided to use. So there it is. Thanks for watching. If this has helped in any way, please do like and subscribe. I'll see you next week when we start all of our different class tutorials, starting with the lovely Artificer. See you then. Ta-ra.